developers of Counter-Strike to finally back in business and push new updates almost every couple of days. And after a small break of two months, they finally released a massive update that completely changes the meta and creates a huge potential for the future. Hey everyone, Max at the microphone again, I spent about a week digging through the new files and today I'm gonna share everything I've found, so let's get right into it. Get 5 free bucks for just trading your CSGO items on Skins Monkey. Simply select a few of your current skins, pick a new one in the same price range and trade your old and rusty items to something more new and shiny. If you can't find something suitable for selected price, it will automatically add the left over to your balance. Skins Monkey runs giveaways every day, week and month. Just complete a few simple tasks and receive free skins. Here you can easily preview desired weapons and if you need any particular item, you can always use the advanced filters in the middle. If you want any trade locked items, you can simply use the reserve feature until they become available. Use code Gaben and buy skins much cheaper with a 30 plus 5% top up bonus. Skins Monkey, links and my code down below. About a week ago, developers finally started a second wave of invites into limited testing of Counter-Strike 2. Exact numbers and logic by which these invites are sent out are still a mystery, but from my feelings this wave was bigger than the previous one. In addition to that, the developers have changed the logic behind the case drops. Now you'll get a case only once or twice a week after leveling up, rather than randomly standing in AFK or playing. And apparently this is done to deal with idle bot farms, but if the drop algorithm is now known in advance, won't that make it easier to manipulate the market? It still seems a bit confusing to me and to avoid this kind of manipulations, I think the total number of cases should be increased or at least the system should be more randomized. At the end of May, the official Valve account on Hacker One rolled out a new policy according to which, starting from June 14th, all CSGO vulnerability reports became irrelevant and will no longer be considered. Besides that, in one of the videos about Counter-Strike 2, the phrase I think we should do the 7.15 appeared for a couple of frames, supposedly hinting at July 15th. But in my opinion, neither the first date nor the second date is likely to mean anything. And if you look at the calendar, then July 15th is a Saturday. And another trailer shows March 15th, which doesn't fit in with the timeline at all. Judging by the Valve time phenomenon, their promise of a summer release could very well mean either the fall or even end of the year, so it's not that easy to predict what and when they are actually planning. And if you keep in mind that they continue the logic with the waves of invites, the closed beta could be stretched for a really long time. Honestly, I'm still surprised the developers decided not to reveal everything at once. And while many of us thought that the new smokes and graphics would be it, almost no one expected such dramatic changes in the buy menu and loadout tab. In fact, this is the first time ever when the developers have changed such a fundamental gameplay mechanic. But most importantly, it creates space for new weapons. Cause in the original buy wheel there was no room for anything new and almost all slots were already occupied by other types of weapons. While the new system essentially allows you for infinite variability and you can add as many new weapons as you like. Just look at it yourself, when cities have slots that you can play around with, T's at the same time have only one default pistol and only one main assault rifle, plus one empty equipment slot which is used for diffuse kits for the opposite side. And honestly, in general, all these inactive slots for equipment and grenades look quite suspicious. Because we already know for a fact that the developers are preparing official support for skins on Zeus and have already provided the community with all the necessary materials and tools to create items for Taser. So these slots will be definitely used the same way, right? And we can also kinda confirm it by looking at the code for the interface. As these slots are no different from weapon slots and similar types of cosmetic items can be just dragged in. But in that case, are they planning new types of grenades, which we already found a couple of months ago? Or will they do skins on grenades, like a colored smokes for example? One of the many new items slash new weapons may be a grenade launcher. Developers made the joke about it on Twitter, but sometimes they actually hint about something by making jokes like that. 
It is important to note that many years ago in one of the updates there was a mention of MK2 grenades, which in real life are used as shells for an underbarrel grenade launcher. And in early September 2022, in Dota 2 update on new Source 2 engine, a simple grenade launcher Fire Sticky mention appeared. At the time of analyzing it, I thought that it might be related to some other game. But given that the grenade launcher already appeared as a full-fledged weapon in the Counter-Strike Condition Zero story campaign, it's not really clear if the developers are joking or not, as the grenade launcher could have looked interesting, for example, in Danger Zone game mode. It is also interesting how much more space has potentially become available for new cosmetic items. I have already covered this in more details in a previous video about Clothes. Apparently, while developing Counter-Strike 2, the developers decided to revisit some early ideas from the original game. Unless you don't know, in the earliest official CSGO concept arts, one of the options for cosmetic items was clothing. And in CS2 files, there was once again a mention of 6 slots for wearables. Similar character customization system has already been implemented in another official licensed game called Counter-Strike Online 2, which was developed under the hood of Valve and released in 2013 exclusively for Asian market. And since Valve is constantly reusing ideas from their old games, I would not be surprised if in the future we will see a full-fledged clothing system in CS2 as well. Just take a look. Here is original concept of the character, here is a model that was added to the Asian version several years later, and here is CSGO's version that was added in one of the recent operations. And there are quite a few such examples. I think that developers will literally take the idea from Counter-Strike Online 2 and bring it to CS2, because it's not that hard to make a couple of agents customizable. And hats or other wearable parts don't have to be flashy or cringy. They can be done in mind with a team or specific agent. At this point, we are already pretty much guaranteed to know about one cosmetic item in the form of pets. Which at this point, the files already have a template for a separate capsule, placeholders with images of chickens, and we definitely know that there is a separate slot reserved in the interface, on the same level as a knife, gloves, graffiti, music kit or agent. In addition, the current glove slot is called clothing hands, but has a general clothing localization name. And in files there is a placeholder icon, which is not currently in use. And then there is a strange map called Building Apartments 01, that suddenly appeared in Counter-Strike 2 files in the prefabs for the ported version of the old Mirage. Most of you probably already noticed that this location is a remake of a small part of the map, at the exit from the T-spawn to the B-plant where the TV is located. And if we'll try to load it in-game, we'll see a bunch of messed up textures. So I've spent a couple of hours, exported everything in Blender and then imported it back in new Source 2 tools, and now can properly demonstrate everything in-game. Basically, it's safe to say that the developers are aiming for an Eastern European style. Roughly the same vibe that we saw in the Half-Life series. And if you look into the names of used assets, it becomes clear that developers are simply reusing models from Half-Life Alex. It is important to note that this piece of map was compiled on Source 2 back in the end of 2021. So basically, two years ago, when everyone was saying that I was crazy. What's interesting, in the latest update, they completely cut out this map, and either they are trying to hide something, or this remake is now cancelled. So I guess we should wait for any official info from the developers themselves. Speaking of maps, it's worth pointing out that the next in line for the limited beta is Nuke, as the developers have left a selection for that main menu background. Apparently, we will see all the maps one by one, as it was in the official Counter-Strike 2 video. Firstly, it'll be touchstone maps, or more like direct ports with little to no changes like Dust 2 or Mirage. Then it'll be upgrades like Nuke, Ancient or Inferno. And only then, finally, we'll get to play on overalls, like Overpass or Italy. And besides all that, I'd like to point out a new workflow for creating cosmetic items. Because in CSGO you had to literally hack into the game to see how your skin would look like on the map or in the inventory. 
when now it can be done in a couple of simple clicks. It's honestly amazing that the developers added a bunch of examples, so any of you can copy a pre-made skin, apply your own textures or parameters and publish your own work without too much hassle. But a little digging through the materials revealed that some weapons now have a weird orange and green mask called a sticker mask. It is important to note that the orange part of this mask covers only the left side of the weapon, so the area that the player sees when holding the weapon in his hands. And if we open a tool called Model Dog and try to add a new modifier to the selected model, the list shows CSGO sticker position, which is a square plane that can be moved by coordinates. So maybe the developers are cooking an update with a custom sticker placement on weapons? If you want to, you can place it on a clip, one or two stickers next to each other, ok, go for it. I think it's a pretty decent idea. So leave a comment with a pizza emoji if you watched this far and check out my previous video where I talk about new and future CS2 updates. Until next time, увидимся!